Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about the Title Pro 7 timeline. Now you'd think that this was a bit of a non-subject, but you'd be wrong. There are several, shall we say, quirks about the timeline that need to be pointed out so that potential problems can be either avoided or resolved. Intrigued? Keep watching and all will be revealed. Welcome to tutorial number 14. I'm going to start with Title Pro in standalone mode. Later on I'll be dealing with it as a plugin. To keep the video structured I'll deal with the various aspects of the timeline individually. Let's start with the timeline frame rate. The default frame rate for the timeline is 30 frames per second. You can change this if required by selecting Title, Title Settings and selecting a frame rate from the drop down list. With this dialog box you can also set the title settings using one of the presets. You can also create a custom title setting, but unfortunately you can't save this. Also be aware with this option that if you change the resolution For instance, to get back to the original resolution, you can't use the title settings dialog box. Just to show you, if I pick 1920 by 1080, the resolution stays the same. This is a known bug. There are a couple of ways to get back to the original resolution. The one I use is to select File, New and Don't Save. That gives me back my original default title. Now let's just talk about frame boundaries. That's a frame boundary. With Title Pro 7 it's impossible to set the playhead anywhere other than on a frame boundary. Those of you who upgraded from Title Pro 6 may remember that with Title Pro 6 it was possible to place the playhead anywhere on the timeline, even between frame boundaries. This caused an awful lot of problems when placing keyframes. If you placed a keyframe between frame boundaries some of the values in the global tab behave very erratically. Thankfully with Title Pro 7 it's impossible to do that now. Now let's talk about the timeline time values. Those are these two sets of time values, one on the left and one on the right. Taking the set on the left, these values refer to the Title Pro 7 timeline. The value on the left represents 
the length of the timeline, in this case five seconds. The value on the right references the position of the playhead on that timeline. And when the title is being played, that value will be null. Now regarding the two values on the right, the right hand value represents the total length of the title, which may not be the length of the Title Pro 7 timeline. The value on the left represents the position of the playhead on the title, depending on the title length and the timeline length, that may not be the same as the value over here. And this is affected by the pause point. More on that shortly. The value on the left will be null and the playhead is static and when the playhead is moving through the title this value will be the position of the playhead on the title and as you can see at the pause marker this value still increments scale of the timeline can be changed with the plus and the minus buttons. The pause marker. This marker sets the position on the timeline where the playhead will pause if the title length is longer than the timeline length. This pause in seconds will be the difference between the title length and the timeline length. When the title is being rendered, the frame at the pause marker will be rendered as a single image that will be displayed for the appropriate pause period when the title is being played. Because of this, it's important that the pause marker is placed in a position on the timeline where there are no moving effects or transitions. Now because the frame at the pause marker is rendered as a single image that will be played for the delay allows titles to be created that are long and complex but have a minimum file size and a minimum rendering time. Now by default there is always one pause marker even if the title length is the same as the timeline length. If you right click in this area here you will see add pause as an option. Click that to add a pause, add another pause. The important thing to remember here is that there's only one active pause point and it's always the one nearest to the beginning of the timeline. If I just play that through, that pause is there. but it doesn't pause there or there. If I now move 
this one over here and play. That one now becomes the active pause point. And the other two are inactive. This is also a known bug. If you right click on these markers, you can delete but you cannot delete the active one. You'll also notice the two additional options here. These serve no purpose in Title Pro 7 and they can be ignored. Just to mention the eye icon. This allows this element's visibility to be toggled. Off, on. This is useful if you have a really complex title with a lot of elements. You can hide the elements that you're not working on so that they don't cause distraction while working on one element. I'd just like to mention a problem that can occur when you're placing keyframes. If, for instance, you need to create a keyframe at the end of the element, the end of the timeline, Create it one frame away from the end of the timeline. If you place it at the end of the timeline, you're actually placing it at the end of the last frame. So firstly, the element won't be visible. And secondly, and more important, when you're setting the keyframe, you will not be able to change these values in a sensible way. They behave very erratically. Just to demonstrate this, if I turn on keyframing, that creates a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline. Add another keyframe at the end of the timeline. Let me see what happened there. I typed in 25 and got 0.5. So these behave very erratically when that keyframe is at the end of the timeline. And as I said, if you need to create one, bring it back one frame. You'll find then that the values work correctly. I'll just delete those to get back where we were. Okay, now this is Title Pro 7 as a plugin launched from Vegas Pro. In this mode, there are a number of differences in the way the Title Pro 7 timeline works. In this mode, the Title Pro timeline 
frame rate is fixed at 30 frames per second. This can't be changed. If we go to title, title settings, we'll see that everything's locked. In this mode, the rendered frame rate of the title depends entirely on the project settings of the host. Now this situation can be a little problematic. If your project settings are anything other than 30 frames per second, say for instance 25 frames per second, which is PAL, if you want to place a keyframe at say one second seven frames at 25 frames per second there's a little bit of guesswork or calculation needs to be done to get that keyframe reasonably accurate on one second seven frames now regarding the timeline time values the two on the left are the same as before when used in standalone mode, but the two on the right refer to the length of the title on the host timeline. Now, depending on the host, this value can be changed. With Vegas Pro, that's not possible. You can highlight and try and change it. And it has no effect. This is entirely down to the length of the media event on the Vegas Pro timeline. An important thing to remember about these two values. Is that this value here, which is the title pro timeline length. Must always be less than or equal to. This value here. If this value is more than this value then the playhead will play to this value and then loop back to the beginning. Another thing to remember about this value is that if the media event length is changed, it will not automatically reflect in this value. In other words, this value doesn't update automatically. It's necessary to switch focus to this UI and update the timeline by either clicking on it and moving the pause marker or playing the timeline. That will update this value to reflect the new length of the media event on the host timeline. Now as you've seen there's more to the timeline than you'd think. It's easy to get confused or frustrated if you don't understand how it works. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.